Hi guys and welcome back and today I want to talk about the top three budget NASs to buy at the end of 2018. Okay, so it's been an interesting year for NAS with so many network attached storage drives out there for you guys to buy. I can understand it can get damn confusing. Now, whether you stumbled across this channel by accident or you followed it before, you're probably well aware of the fact that I talk about NAS a hell of a lot. I like network attached storage. People have got their own interests. Some people like fishing. Some people like books. I like NAS. And for all the devices that I've seen, both on this and the other channel, as well as NASCompares.com, I've been looking at different network attached storage devices for a number of years now. Now, at the moment, we're seeing lots of new releases throughout 2018 and all the units promised for next year. But these are my top three picks for you guys out there that want to buy a device that's you know low on the price tag and high on the features. These are devices for you guys out there that are looking for a new NAS that don't want to break the bank. You're new to NAS, maybe you're looking for some sort of network or internet based drive that you want to just back up to a simple, DLNA media server, simple backups for one or one to five machines, low level surveillance, stuff like that. These devices can give you that in varying forms. So what I'm gonna talk about is my top three now. I'm gonna stop saying it and just get straight down to it. First and foremost, at number one, it is the WD MyCloud Home. It was released mid mana about a third of the way for 2018, and this one bay NAS here is great. I mean, the price tag of the thing, it's £140, give or take, without the VAT, but it does include hard drive media, varying from as little as 2 TB all the way up to 8 and more. This device arrives with a Realtek CPU, the 1.4 GHz RTD 1295, and it's the PB version, and that's a an, 60-bit um, architecture ARM chip. It also arrives with one gig of DDR4 memory, um, two to three years of warranty, depending on whether you get the drives inside or not, one LAN and a USB port. Now, the reason this is in my top three is first and foremost, it, although it's a quite a Billy Basic NAS, it does give you a lot of features and functionality of the base level of network attached storage, mobile phone apps, internet and network access to Mac and Windows users. It gives you all of that at an incredibly cheap price, including that hard drive. On top of that, it is incredibly discreet and easily the quietest NAS of the three that we're gonna talk about. But for me, the thing that really stands out about this is even at that price tag, this is one of the lowest priced Plex Media servers out there right now. The, the application, the Plex Media server app that arrives with this and this CPU is one of the only NASs out there that has a full version of Plex on it with this CPU. All other NAS devices like Synology and Plex, and um, Synology and QNAP, like some of the ones we're gonna mention in this and other videos, they have to utilize the beta and the alpha version of that Plex Media Server application for ARM 64-bit chips, particularly that Realtek CPU. Do watch my other videos to learn more about that. But once again, this is the only Realtek-based NAS right now that arrives with a full version of Plex, as opposed to the beta or the alpha that you have to sign up for independently with its potential bugs and glitches. And of course, the fact that with that price tag and with a hard drive included, and the varied levels of access that you have, and a brand like WD with the WD NAS drive inside, that's why it makes my top three. So that's first place, what about the rest? In second place is a QNAP, namely the TS128A. Now, this QNAP device arrives with a very similar CPU as the last one we talked about, namely the Realtek RTD 1295, but not the PB version. It doesn't arrive with the full version of Plex Media Server, as mentioned before, but what it does arrive with is one gig of DDR4 memory, two USB 2 ports, two years of manufacturer's warranty, and one LAN. Because it doesn't arrive with the uh, hard drive inside pre-installed, you can make your own choice and buy your own hard drives as needed. It arri arrives at about 100 pounds and it does support the very latest hard drives, all the way from one TB all the way up to 14 terabytes of NAS storage, such as those Seagate Ironwolf drives. Now, the reason this has made the top three list, although it doesn't have plates, is that it does have QTS. And QTS from QNAP has got hundreds of applications covering everything from multimedia to business to email um, to backups to surveillance and more on top of that there are somewhere around 10 to 15 applications for ios and android that let you you know work with your nas both in the home network and outside there over the internet and it does give you a greater 
variety of things you can do when compared with the WD, which is very file ma uh, level and a little bit more basic. So yes, you are paying more for this NAS because you have to buy the NAS drives as well. And none of the devices we talk about today will feature VAT or your local tax, so do bear that in mind. But there's still no denying that the QNAP software does add significant value to this NAS. So yes, you do seem to be paying more for the NAS than you do for the media, which wasn't the case in the WD, but the software is just fantastic. If you don't believe me, do check out my videos on QTS and those mobile applications in the previous videos and throughout this year. But that's why this has made my second place, because it is by far the most cost-effective QNAP available right now. My third place is a real modest spec NAS. And this Synology, the DS-119J, was released late summer and is available now for, you know, incredibly affordable £85, which for a Synology NAS is insane. Um, this one-bay NAS arrives with a Marvell Armada CPU, so I know Realtek today, that's the 3700-88F3-720. Basically, it's a dual-core version uh, with a 100 mega, uh, 800 megahertz version of the previous iteration, which was the DS-119J, which was the same megahertz, almost identical CPU, but that was a single core, this is a dual core. Now, this does have the lowest spec of all three NASs that we're talking about in our top three budget NAS, and it only arrives with a quarter of a gig of memory, which is pretty poor, a, you know, a quarter of what the other two uh, NASs were offering you, and it does have two years of warranty, two USB 2 ports, and, a, and one LAN port there for network internet. So why on earth am I recommending this in the top three budget NASs other than the price tag? Well, again, it's the software. The Synology DSM software is by far the most fluid and easy to use software out there. And if you are buying a NAS for its software, this is the best of the three. It doesn't run as many apps as the QNAP that we just mentioned. But what I will say that for a budget NAS buyer, and particularly as your first NAS, and you're only going to use it to access photos, DLNA media, nothing too intense like 4K, but 720 and 1080p media of your local area network to your smart TV, your console, or maybe to music and some network sound systems, this can handle it. I'm not gonna say it's gonna blow your socks off, and it definitely is the first step towards a better device later, but if you're unsure about buying an NAS right now, not worth, sure it's worth the investment, or you're thinking you want something as a network drive to back up an existing network attached storage system, this is definitely something to consider because it is a great little NAS. And again, that price tag and support of pretty much any SATA-based hard drive or SSD, and the fact this is probably the quietest of the three devices when it comes to installing larger media, because the WD already has its media pre-installed, it is definitely the choice for you. Now, those have been my top three NASs of 2018 for budget NAS buyers. Whether it comes out this year or not, and I'm not looking at anything coming out from about October onwards, these are the three to look at if you really are short on cash but need network attached storage now. Do check out my other videos. Do click like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Do visit NAS Compares for free advice all the time. I'm one email away. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. I'll give you a base level of access when there isn't a cat on camera getting in the way 